Here we are with video number three in our series of the seven alignment targets for optimal vinyl playback. In this segment, we'll be talking about azimuth. First, let's make sure we understand what is the azimuth angle. Well, when you are looking at the front of the cartridge, at cartridge height, and you see a listing of that cartridge, like a listing ship, listing left, listing right, that is angular change on the azimuth axis. So if everything has been assembled perfectly, that cartridge would have a zero azimuth angle to it. The top surface of the cartridge would be perfectly parallel with the record. However, in practice, this is often not what is needed. So how do we know this is our optimal angle, that we would want everything in our cartridge, all of the parts, to be perfectly orthogonally aligned so that we could have a perfectly top uh, level of the, the, the top of the cartridge be perfectly level to the surface of the record. At the time of cutting, the cutting engineers will aim for the cutting stylus to be perfectly perpendicularly oriented to the lacquer. That's what they're aiming for. There is no reason that they would want to be a little bit uh, clockwise or counterclockwise in error. The degree to which they can accomplish that, actually, that can vary from lathe to lathe or setup to setup, but they all aim for that perpendicularity. So on average, if that's what we're aiming for on playback, we would stand in the best possible chance, statistically speaking, to get the most out of all of our records. However, there are additional complications when it comes to the cutting side, because then there's the cutting stylus itself. Here's a photograph of a cutting stylus taken under our laboratory microscope. This is a very commonly used brand. You'll notice that the one that the left channel facet and the right channel facet are not both 45 degrees from the center line of the stylus. Unfortunately, just like with playback styluses and playback cantilevers and the stylus cantilever assemblies, these cutting styli are built within tolerances as well. And in an example like this, where you've got asymmetric cutting edges, where in this case, 47 degrees and 43 instead of 45, 45. This guarantees, this stylus guarantees crosstalk cut into the groove. Now, are engineers, cutting engineers generally aware of what they're putting in to their, their, their lathes when they're using these? I think probably not. In fact, I got this one uh, from a cutting engineer. A uh, very good one, in fact. So, and it's used. <laughs> so. This, cutting, this stylus is likely used to make one or more of the records that you might be enjoying right now. Unfortunately, because of this stylus's asymmetry, it's going to underperform. But these are the opportunities that exist in vinyl playback and in vinyl cutting. There are opportunities to tighten up tolerances. This exists on both sides. So WAM engineering efforts to understand for us on the playback side how to get the most out of all records, well, we had to understand more about the cutting side as well, and in doing so, we've been finding these issues. What will this cutting stylus asymmetry mean for you? Well, nothing right now, except that it's an opportunity. This type of asymmetry is an opportunity for vinyl cutting, and therefore the resultant records made from such cuts, to get better. That's it. It's something to look forward to. It's a reason to be optimistic as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so now we know that assuming the cutting engineer used a perfectly symmetrical cutting stylus and has uh, the, the center line of the cutting stylus perfectly perpendicular to the record's surface, now does that mean that we should align our cartridge perfectly parallel, the top surface of the cartridge perfectly parallel? to the record surface? No, it does not mean that because, of course, our stylus cantilever assemblies and the coil former that's on that stylus cantilever assembly is built with intolerances, and that could be a few degrees off. If that coil former is a few degrees off relative to the groove walls of 45 and 45, then we need to introduce an azimuth angle. Again, watch the video on why we measure azimuth electrically and not optically so you can understand why this is the case. As you know, WAM Engineering has as one of its services the analysis of 
uh, your cartridge in our laboratory for its optimal four angles. And then we database all of our results. And on average, um, the average azimuth angle required for a cartridge is just a hair over one degree, about 1.1 degrees. Now, 1.1 degrees, you can, you can visually see that when the, the, the head shell is tilted. And there's nothing wrong with having the cartridge listing, as it were, at an angle, at an azimuth angle, up until the point when it does become a problem. At a certain azimuth angle, the stylus will no longer be tracking the groove walls well. Now, you may remember that styluses are built with something called a major radius, and that major radius allows the stylus to ride in the groove at an azimuth angle itself, meaning the stylus can ride in a manner where it is at an angle to the surface of the record and still behave perfectly well. That's what the major radius offers. But the larger the major radius, the less forgiving that stylus is to being on an extreme azimuth angle. The largest major radius that I'm aware of is probably on a Geiger replicant stylus uh, at 100 microns major radius. These styluses would not likely be able to handle anything more than maybe 1.8 degrees um, yeah, maybe about 1.8 degrees azimuth angle. Um, whereas some of the Namiki or um, Ogura designs could handle up to 2.5 degrees without a problem. When we measure for optimal azimuth angle in the laboratory here, we look at three things. The channel crosstalk, of course, and we want to ideally balance them. So the crosstalk that we get into the left channel from the right channel signal, and the crosstalk we get into the right channel from the left channel signal. We want them roughly to be equal. But we also look at phase relationships. How is the phase relationship of same doing on, on both sides? And then the third element we also look at is actually channel balance. Channel balance is a less important figure, but it makes, but it's helpful in that it, it allows us here in the laboratory to see that we're headed in the right direction. Now there's no products on the market that I'm aware of that offer the ability to simultaneously manage these three parameters. Look for that in the future, but for now it's only happening in our laboratory that I know of. In this video, I'm not going into how to accomplish your ideal azimuth angle for your cartridge, but for instructions on how to do it on your end, just look at the uh, Wally School blog and there are a couple articles there that will lead you to the instructions. As you've heard me say before, when you hit that optimal azimuth angle for your cartridge, the sound field widens and deepens and the imaging gets much, much better. It's instrument separation gets better. And overall, it just feels like there's more clarity and coherence. This is the third installment in our series, and you can now look forward to the videos on Zenith Error, VTA, and SRA. As always, if you've got any questions, please reach out to us and enjoy Analog Forever.